Kevin Yannick here with Pitt and Quarry. We have with us today, George Redden, who's the managing director at FMI Capital Advisors. George specializes in mergers and acquisitions um, and financial advisory services. And, and he's also a contributor quarterly to, to Pitt and Quarry. And we're excited to have George with us here today. today. George, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you. Appreciate you having me. George, I wanted to focus on a, a couple of industry areas in particular with you here today specifically capital expenditures and, and mergers and acquisitions and, and what's taking place with that. But let's start with CapEx. Given the pandemic and the circumstances that it brought on, George, it's kind of clear that aggregate producers have made some aggressive adjustments to their 2020 capital spending. And, and from what I gather in the market, it was big major million dollar to $10 million type of projects. They're just not taking place right now. And that's pretty unfortunate because the industry, its producers came into the year with a rather bullish attitude, they felt pretty good about themselves, but but now we're kind of seeing that activity's frozen. So right now, just curious, George, what are you seeing on, on the CapEx front with aggregate producers? And, and given the shift, do you have any early expectations for what we might ex- expect with CapEx in the months ahead and into 2021? A great question, Kevin. Um, I think you start with uh, what you said, that people had great expectations coming to the year. 19 was a good year. You may recall, do a little bit more history. The, the latter part of 18 was not good. So we come into 19, have good year, and it, things look pretty darn good coming into this year. Of course, you had all the macro global concerns about when, if we have a slowdown. So capital expenditures for a lot of people, especially anybody who's operating in a short season, right, um, are gonna take place often in the winter. So a lot of the major capital expenditures you know if i had a crusher down or if i need to get new loaders or, or whatever that was something that was thought of going into the year with budgets and probably executed on in the first quarter before COVID became a big deal now going forward once we kind of got into the COVID environment uh capital expenditures become in some degree optional right again if i have a crusher down i have no choice i got to fix that but other uh, capital expenditures become optional and we're waiting for a little bit more clarity. So we think of CapEx in two categories. We think of it as the replacement maintenance CapEx, especially when you think about things that are mo- more mobile equipment. They wear out, they need, they're on a steady diet of replacing. And then you have the other category other than maintenance would be, we call it growth capital expenditures. So now I'm thinking about expanding into a new market or taking advantage of some supply and demand dynamics in a market and I want to expand my plant capacity, right? I think now those projects are, a lot of people may be stepping back and saying, let's wait and see. We don't know enough yet about COVID-19. We don't know about the implications on the departments of transportation. We don't know yet about the federal highway bill being reauthorized or not, or whether there'll be infrastructure spending, whether we'll have another wave, um, whether we'll come back strong in the fall. So all that uncertainty, I do think that there are a number of people who are saying, let's pause. Now, if demand's uncertain, we pause. If demand looks like it's gonna be down because of this, then similar to what we had coming out of 2008, nine, we had a lot of excess equipment and excess capacity, right? The market demand goes down, but the plants and plant capacity didn't. So we had excess capacity and people were in a position to defer their capital expenditures for a while. Get the funding in place. And all of a sudden we should expect a fairly robust 21 or beyond CapEx because we will have had some deferred CapEx along the way. George, looking ahead, you talk about uncertainty. I, I think there's got to be uncertainty on the on the M and A level too, and you're obviously front and center, very close to that. What, what are you seeing? What change and shifts are you seeing when it comes to M and A, and and what might that road look like again down the road? Great question too. So I think of merger and acquisition spending as another form of capital spending. Right? It's instead of buying iron from your dealer. Um, or getting, putting in more capacity, whatnot, you're buying a company that's giving you that expansion, that growth. And again, uncertainty is really difficult for people to pull the trigger and make decisions. So what we're seeing from our friends in the industry who are the typical buyers 
is a willingness to continue to look at deals because they have to continue to grow. Organic growth has never been enough for these companies to meet shareholder objectives. So they have to grow. It's a question of when, how, where. So they're looking at deals. The question I've challenged many of them with is, will you close a deal? Right? I'm, I tend to be on the other side, helping out the people selling. And it's no good for us to go through an exercise if we're not going to close it. So we're in a very kind of a un, period of uncertainty, again, use that word. And we are not sure what the, how the buyers are ultimately going to treat COVID-19. Let me give you an example. If I, if I liked your business, I made you an offer to purchase your business. I'm 60, 90, 120 days out after making that offer from being able to close it and get you your money. All right. So what's going to happen in that 60, 90, 120 day period with what's going on in the market? Certainly, we think we'll know more about funding or lack thereof. Certainly, we'll know more about the reopening and phases. So a lot of people are sitting back waiting for that knowledge. And, you know, so, so I think a couple things will come out of that as we, as we, you know, get rid of some of that uncertainty. Post 2008-9, without safety lieu being reauthorized and a lot of uncertainty remaining, there was a steady diet of bolt-on acquisitions. The small acquisition in your local market where you take out a small operator. Lots of synergies, makes sense. Everybody can get to the table and make the deal work. The platform deals or growth deals, I'm going into a new market. I want to establish a beachhead in a new market. I'm just changing places with the owners. I have no synergies. That stalled out really until we got the fast act passed. So we're coming into another period here, election year, just like we did at the 2008 crisis. And we have another federal highway bill expiring the end of September. So we have a lot of uncertainty. So when, when we come out of this, we're either going to see, in my opinion, the small bulk bonds, often they're not as well capitalized as others, and a need to sell. Or if we come out of this with good news on funding and good news on COVID, I think you're going to see a pent up demand on the buyer side to acquire good companies because it gives them the capacity, especially if you're an aggregate producer who's vertically integrated, your bottleneck is not producing stone. Your bottleneck is laying down that stone either in the form of asphalt or delivering in the form of ready mix. And so people, I think, are if, it, if everything is really good, everybody's going to look to how do I expand and, and buy capacity. If it's not so good, I think you're going to see more strategic bolt-ons. But we will, just like we did post-2008-9, we will see a lot of m and activity once we know which direction we're heading in. There's a lot to keep an eye on in, in the months to come. Um, it'll be, I'll be curious to see which producers are, are best positioned and kind of get through the, the tide here, here uh, you know, coming into 2021. But uh, appreciate you joining here today, and we'll look for more commentary from you down the road. Thanks, Kevin. Have a good day. You too.